Learning Module 3, Effective Length K-Factors for Frame Members. We'll begin by defining the geometry. To do this, we'll go under Geometry, Define Frame. Down at the bottom, we can put in the input. We have one bay, and that bay is 20 feet long, which is 240 inches. We have one story, and that story is 15 feet times 12 or 180 inches. Hit apply and our frame is in. Now we are missing the bottom beam so we'll need to go in and construct that. So under geometry, define element, we'll select node 1. You'll notice it's typed in down at the bottom automatically. And then our finish node is node 2 and we hit apply and the beam has been put in. By default, MassTan places all of the elements so their local Y or web axis is in the global XY plane. In our example here, we need to rotate the columns so that the columns are in minor axis bending when we do our planar analyses. To do this, we'll go under Geometry, Reorient Elements. We'll select the two columns. We'll type in 90 degrees down at the bottom. And then we'll select Apply. So at this point now, the beams are in major axis bending and the columns are in minor axis bending. At any point, we can view the local or web axis of the elements. We can do this by going under View, Labels, and selecting element, web, or local Y. The blue tick marks that we're seeing represent the element's local Y or web axis. You can see that our two beams are in major axis bending, where our columns, we can't see the tick marks. So this means that they're pointing at us when the columns are then in minor axis bending. Now we'll go back and we'll turn off those tick marks. To do this, we'll select View, Labels, and then Element Web or Local Y. Now we'll go on and subdivide the columns into eight elements. So we go into Geometry, Subdivide Elements. We pick the two columns. Down at the bottom, we ramp up to eight elements. And we hit Apply. Note that we won't subdivide the beams. We'll now turn off the element and node numbers. So under View, select Labels and Node Numbers. Similarly, we'll turn off the element labels by going under View, Labels, and Element Numbers. At this point, the geometry of our frame has been defined. We'll now go on and define the section and material properties. To do that, we'll select Properties, Define Section. Now we could type in all the information down at the bottom, but instead we'll select Database, and that information can be automatically typed into us once we click on the section we desire. And in this case, we'll put in the column first, which is a W10 by 33. So I find the W10 by 33, I click on it, and all the information has been typed in hit apply, and that information has been now saved as section one. Similarly, we'll go in and define the top beam, which is a W12 by 14. Click on it. Its properties have been input down at the bottom. And we hit apply, and now section two has been defined. And then we'll go on and select the W24 by 68, and its properties will be defined. So select W24 by 68, information typed in, hit apply, and our three sections have now been defined. Now we can attach these section properties to the elements. So under properties, we'll select attach section. Section one, as it's showing down at the base here, is a W10 by 33. Those are all the columns. So we'll select all, but we don't want to include the beams. So now I'm going to click on the two beams and remove them from the list and hit apply, 
in section one has now been assigned to all the columns. To attach the second section property, first we'll advance it to section two. We'll clear the list. In section two is a W12 by 14, which will be assigned to the top beam. So I click on it and then I hit apply. And now we'll attach the W24 by 68 section to the bottom beam. So first I'll advance it to section three. I'll clear the list and select the bottom beam. And then I'll hit apply. At this point, all the section properties have been defined and attached to the elements. We can now go on and define the material properties. So similarly, we'll select properties, define material. We'll type in steel. We'll provide it a 29,000 kips per square inch. And we'll provide an FY value of 50. And then we can hit apply. With the material properties now defined, we'll go and attach them to all the elements. So under properties, select attach material. We select all and then we'll hit apply. At this point, all the section and material properties have been defined and they've all been attached to the elements. You can see that all the elements are solid, so the analysis should go forward. We can now define the boundary conditions. So under conditions, select define fixities. Our left support here is a pin. So we'll restrain X and Y displacement. Hit apply and hit clear because our right support over here is a roller, which means we'll release X, but just maintain Y. Hit apply and our two boundary conditions have been defined. Next, we'll define the loading on the frame. Under conditions, we'll select define forces. And on these two nodes up at the top, the left node I'll click on and the right node, so I've selected those, we're going to put a minus one kip of force. And when I hit apply, you can see the forces in green um, of one kip. At this point, our model has been fully defined and it would probably be a good time to save the model. Next, we'll go on and run the analysis. So in our case, we've select analysis. We've got several different types of analysis. In this case, we're going to be doing an elastic critical load or buckling or eigenvalue analysis. So we select elastic critical load. Now our frame has only been defined with boundary conditions in the plane, so we need to switch space frame to planar frame. We only really need to see one mode in this case, and we hit apply, and the analysis has been complete. So let's have a look at the results. So under results, select diagrams, and deflected shape. We'll plot the first mode by clicking on apply, and we can see the, the deformed shape. Perhaps we might want to increase the scale factor. So I'm going to remove that 10 and maybe make it 25 times instead. Hit apply and we can see the buckled shape. Up at the top, we can also see that the applied load ratio at failure was 269.9. If we multiply that by the one kip load on the force, we get the buckling load in the columns. We're now gonna go back and perform an inelastic critical load analysis. So we can select analysis, inelastic critical load. Again, down at the bottom, we need to reset that to be a planar frame. We hit apply and the analysis is complete. We can now take a look at the results by selecting results, diagrams, deflected shape, hit apply. And we can see the inelastic critical load has been calculated at 267.2 times the one kip or 267.2 kips. And we're looking at the deformed shape. So at this point, we have completed the tutorial for the side sway uninhibited case. If we wanted now to investigate the side sway inhibited case, we would go back to the boundary conditions and we would include an additional support 
at the top of the upper left column. We would repeat the analysis as we did before, and we could look at the results for each one of the analysis using the results display shape. This concludes our tutorial.